Hi everybody, it's Janine of Janine Scribbles. Uh, today I would like to do a video for you on um, the lowercase typewriter font. I've been practicing on Instagram. Um, I'm using the Paper and Ink Arts uh, uh, guide sheets, uh, but you can use any um, squared or dotted uh, paper as long as the, the, the squares aren't over five millimeters, otherwise uh, you will lose uh, control over your movements. Uh, so a, a one centimeter grid would be a bit too much, uh, I think. Um, and uh, for tools, you can use any tool you're comfortable with. So I'm, I'm just using my, my Sailor Fountain pen because it gives me a nice bit of grip. Uh, but you can use a pencil or ballpoint or felt tip or whatever you're comfortable with. So uh, let's get cracking with the A, with the loop, the descender, and then this loop here and a little dot to finish off um, um, this curve. Uh, I'd like to aim at making this loop a bit more narrow where it connects to the descender than it is here to have this like elegant like uh, amoeba type um, uh, part of the A here like like a paisley uh, almost but not too extreme then for the B I usually start with the, uh, the serif going down and flowing immediately into the loop of the B. Notice I don't I don't finish it all the way around. Uh, sometimes I do, depending on how smooth uh, the tipping is I'm, uh, of, of the tool I'm working with. But uh, in this case, I'm, uh, I'm closing it off from uh, the descender here, the ascender as, uh, as it is actually. Uh, closing it off from uh, the ascender and then uh, finishing it off uh, at the top here. Then for the C, I make a sort of six eighth uh, circle with a little ball to finish off at the top of uh, of the C. For the D, I start with the basic C shape, and I don't close it all the way because that will make it look like like too much like stick and ball. Um, so I close it up with the, the ascender and then a little flicked up serif to finish it off then the e this is also the same basic shape and the crossbar which is quite horizontal and if i don't immediately hit um, the beginning of the, this circular shape then i just go up a bit until it connects let's see does the f fit on the page still, yes it does. So an F down, not too far down, otherwise it will be too too awkward. Then this little ball to finish it off, just give it a little foot so it's anchored on the page and the crossbar is as high as at the top of the, the D uh, or the E sorry and the D and the C. So it's nice and balanced. Then the G you start with the upper loop, which is slightly oval, as I'm very much trying to do here. It stays well within the grid lines, so you don't want it uh, to touch the grid lines on either side because it has to be, has to remain a bit smaller than the bottom loop. The bottom loop is a bit wider, and I like to give it this little, like a dent. Um, in this top part, um, I try to do it as elegantly as possible, but for this video, um, you'll have to excuse my, uh, my jittery lines, but I like to give it like this part would be able to bounce off the, the lower part uh, of the G. The H, starting with the serif again. You can also, of course, Start with the, the ascender and then add on the serif later, uh, whichever you're comfortable with. Then starting the loop. And I'm not uh, bringing the loop all the way to this grid line, just staying a little bit before. Otherwise, um, 
I think it would be just a bit too too wide. So in my uh, humble opinion now it's it's just a bit within the grid and a little bit more uh, more humble. And the eye, which is just like this uh, little serif to this uh, to this line. Just following straight down, give it a little foot to stand on, and a J. Very much the same, dropping a little bit below the baseline, not too much, and also again a, a, a modest little hook and a tiny ball to finish it up here. The K. Descending leg, descending leg. I try to make the descending leg here just a tiny bit further than the ascending leg to give it like a, a good sturdy um, base to stand on. Otherwise, I feel like that the K is, is tumbling over. Then the L, which is like uh, the eye, only uh, a bit elongated, of course. Then the M, let me, whoops, let me move the camera down a bit, sorry for that, sorry for the, the wonky F in the corner there, I have to practice as well, the, the M here, of course this is, should be that straight downwards, but hey, I'm human, so there's the, the arch, and I'm also keeping this arch within these grids. Otherwise, if I would fill up the grids completely, then the M would be just too massive a letter compared to the rest of them. And I do the same with the N, staying perhaps a little bit wider than, than the loop uh, of the M, but staying well within uh, the grid. Uh, to make it nice and balanced with the rest of the letters like uh, I'm just I made it a bit wider than the H here but the, the, the H and the N should be approximately uh, as wide then the O starting off with this round and I usually I do from the top down on the left top down on the right to try to create as, as nice and circular an O as, as possible. If I feel very lucky, my, the tip that I'm using is, is smooth, then I might make just like the, the, the circular O in, in one uh, fell swoop. But usually I do like top down to the left, top down to the right. And then the B. Now the loop on the P should have like the the D and the B this there should be a space so it, it shouldn't be a, a, a ball connected to a stick it should be like like a, a six eighth of a circle connected to to the stick to the the, the sender and there's of course a nice little serif here and a foot to stand on so for the Q that's almost mirrored Only I don't add a serif at the top of the queue. Um, otherwise, I would I, it just would look out of balance, and it also uh, sets it apart from uh, from the P, um, which is nice uh, if you have uh, trouble uh, discriminating between uh, P's and Q's. Um, so notice that this. This is a bit longer than this. This should be actually about the same uh, height, of course. And I don't uh, descend my descenders too uh, too low because otherwise I think the letters would be out of balance. I think this is already taking it a bit too low. But hey, that's what happened today. So <laughs> we have to live with it. I move on to the R. Also again, the serif and a little foot. The bow turning out to be a bit wobbly but and then the, the little dot to finish off uh, the R here uh, let me see if I can move it down without too much trouble sorry for that guys 
so stay balanced please yeah move on to the s now the s is always a little bit more and a little bit less loopy than you expect it to be because you want a nice tight s but you also want the the elegance of the loop and I've done better S's than this one, but I think uh, you catch uh, my point here. Um, so this should be a little less loopy than I've, I've done here. It's a little bit more flattened, and this, of course, should be a nice and smooth transition as here. And it should be this this shape should al almost be be um, um, if you would turn it like uh, like 180 degrees, it would be exactly the same uh, apart from the serifs and I'll explain that now the top serif I like to drop the top serif just a little bit below where the S starts to anchor it nice and tight here at the, the, the top line and uh, the bottom serif I start exactly where the S ends so this is it, it's only a fraction of a millimeter perhaps but I like to drop this down just a little bit lower and then the T, so that's a, a basic, just a, a hook shape, and this stays well within um, the grid, otherwise your T becomes uh, too wide, and I like to keep, this is already a bit too high for my taste, I like to keep this uh, as low above um, uh, this top line as, um, as it will allow me, because from here, from the top of the ascending part, I flick down towards the crossbar and then usually it's so uh, close to uh, these crossing lines that you can hardly see it and it, there should not be like I did just now there should not be uh, an empty space in here it should be really so like like very tight across these lines and then the, the crossbar is uh, uh, on this uh, this top line and the crossbar does not uh, reach further than, than the hook of the T. And the U, with a little elegant serifs on top. And I've already, I've made this too wide because this should also be um, inside, uh, well inside the grid. So it should be a little more narrow than this one turned out. And the V. Now the V, the, the top serifs allow you, if you don't um, make these equally high, then you can always uh, correct a bit with these uh, top serifs. That don't make them too fat, or they will uh, look awkward. And then for the W, you start with uh, like an incomplete V, like a bit over halfway between uh, the base and the top line then you add a complete V to that and put the serifs on top this also allows you to uh, to correct this a bit and you saw that this V was a little bit higher than this point so I just I just faded a bit and added a bit of line weight to this to to make them about equally uh, equally low. Now for a letter which I uh, which I always struggle with. That's the X. It sounds very easy, but as you can see here, I'll do it over because you can see here by our crossed um, uh, the bars. I think that's just a bit too low. Uh, this looks a bit too low for, for the rest of the letter, so I'll try to see if I can cross it a bit higher. Whoops, slipping there. Well, not my day for X's, I guess. <laughs> uh, so this is slightly higher than this X, and I, I like it to be just a bit higher uh, then the middle line of uh, the base line and, and, and the top line to, uh, to make it look like a, like a natural, uh, uh, nice, uh, nice X. A y. So 
uh, the stairs were not straight, but you get my point where they should be. Also, the the uh, descender of the Y is pretty straight, and it actually it follows the uh, this uh, 56 uh, degree angle pretty pretty accurately because if you would do it um, across uh, the grid, then it would become awkward and out of balance. So um, this is one of the reasons I like to use uh, this this guide sheet because for this letter and I don't use the Y very very often so this paper gives you excellent uh, support for um, making the angle uh, on this uh, this 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 uh, stroke uh, pretty nicely as it does with uh, with the V actually and uh, this part of the W which is horribly wonky but this is almost uh, in in line with that that guideline it ought to be in line with that guideline actually but hey we're only human right so now for the z which is also pretty hard because it's all straight lines and if you're a bit shaky like i am right now then they turn out to be a bit wobbly but it's the basic uh, idea of the shape of the letter uh, I'm trying to convey uh, here. So it's just uh, across or across the, the, the top line uh, from here to the beginning of the bottom line. Very basic, actually. And then a little serifs about maybe not even a millimeter uh, dropping down from the top and uh, going upwards uh, from the bottom. And I see I have all of the letters uh, in focus right now, so I won't wobble my camera around uh, any more than necessary. Uh, well, it's it's the basic shapes, as you can see. They're not perfect, but hey, it's all done uh, by hand in uh, my first ever uh, YouTube video. So I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with how they turned out. If you have any questions uh, about uh, any of the letters or... Uh, practicing or tools or whatever please leave a comment uh, in the comment section um, if there's anything you would like to see explained better uh, then, uh, then let me know um, I will try to upload uh, uh, uppercase and numerals uh, in due course I'm still waiting for uh, for a phone holder to, uh, to hold my phone because I've got it balanced uh, on top of a little case uh, right now uh, so I'm, <laughs> I'm working with what I have here. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you enjoy practicing. Uh, thank you for watching uh, the video uh, all the way to the end, if you made it to the end. And uh, like to see you next time. Okay, bye.